bones are strong and stiff material but still it can fracture and when the fracture tries to heal it involves a cascade of repair tissues stabilizing the fracture and allowing for solid bony union let's learn fracture healing myself dr kadir stalin fracture healing happens either primary or secondary or combination of both based on the construct primary healing or cortical healing occurs with rigid immobilization in this picture primary healing after anatomic reduction of a transverse diaphyseal fracture and application of compression plate is shown where the plate lies the cis cortex undergoes primary contact healing thus contact healing occurs with absolute stability construct this healing is a type of intramembranous healing with haversian remodeling some people believe primary healing as a mere side effect of internal creeping substitution osteonal remodeling just replacing the necrotic bone whereas secondary healing also called as endochondral healing occurs with periosteal bridging it starts with hematoma formation and active inflammation the formed hematoma provides the hematopoietic cells and secretes lot of growth factors the predominant hematopoietic cells are macrophages neutrophils and platelets all these hematopoietic cell secretes lot of cytokines predominantly platelet derived growth factors tnf alpha transformation growth factor beta interleukins like interleukins 1 6 10 and 12 all these cytokines recruits fibroblast and mesenchymal cells forming granulation tissue the osteoblast and fibroblast starts proliferate inside this granulation tissue and this is a reason why it is better to avoid enocytes during this phase because inhibition of the enzyme cox2 can affect this osteoblastic cellular differentiation the next stage is called stage of repair or callus formation primary callus forms within 2 weeks bridging the fracture site the predominant amount of collagen in the early soft callus are type 2 collagen later they are replaced by type 1 collagen also the medullary callus supplements this bridging periosteal soft tissue callus the amount of callus is inversely proportional to the extent of immobilization providing mechanical stability at this stage of fracture healing is very important because adequate mechanical stability determines the differentiation to be more towards osteoblastic nature thereby ensuring adequate healing of the bone endochondral ossification comes into the picture now converting the soft callus into hard callus what we call as oven bone remember oven bone is still an immature bone later the type 10 collagen is expressed as an extracellular matrix and it starts undergoing calcification over time the cartilaginous calcification occurs at the junction between the chondrocytes and newly forming bone and making the hard callus more harder the last stage of bone healing is called as remodeling in this stage the newly formed oven bone is remodeled through osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity this terminal differentiation is influenced by various signaling pathway involving bone morphogenic protein indian hedgehog gene etc so at last a oven bone is converted into the lamellar bone this bony remodeling is shaped by wolfsla and piezoelectric charges finally the protease enzyme degrades the excessive extracellular matrix and that's how the fracture unites If you have any doubts on this topic please feel free to post in the comment box we are happy to help you thank you